Hey, my community, Jeff back again. It is time for another A to Z in Christian rock. Again, briefly, just to describe it, if you haven't seen one before, we're looking at my vinyl collection of bands that would fall into the category of Christian rock, hard rock, metal, anything on the little extreme side or anything above basic classic rock or pop, the, the heavier side of labeled Christian rock. So these are bands that are either in some way or fashion marketed that way, labeled that way, and of course there are gray areas for bands that tinker with that and maybe aren't marketed that way. So we're going to get a lot of it in there, but uh, today I think most all the bands today are straight up, you know, the ones that are obviously marketed that way. So I did find, it was supposed to be at letter K, right? And I found that I have one, one vinyl record of a Christian band with K. So let's get into that. So we're going to combine L today. Today's basically going to be L. Killed by Cain. Uh, Killed by Cain started off as White Ray, and then they changed their name when they got a record deal to Killed by Cain. So, um, anyway, yes, Kentucky Band. Uh, this album was produced by Bride, uh, by Dale Thompson of Bride, and uh, it was reissued on vinyl just a couple years ago, 2018. Um, it is an older album from back in the early 90s, I believe. 93. All right, so with that, we're moving into the L's now. All right, and up first is Leviticus, and this is actually their this is actually what their first album in, in in Swedish Swedish band. I've talked about them a lot. I love them a lot. They haven't been together for a while, but they put out albums back in the '80s and '90s. One of the first bands I discovered when I got into Christian music in 1985. Their first album had come out the year before, not this one. This is this one that came out in their homeland in Sweden, but this is the one that I found in uh, a local store under the independent import section so got it fell in love with it i have two copies of this i don't know how um somehow oh that's right uh, i believe one of them was vclt to me but all the leviticus albums have been reissued uh in the past couple years and so they have been remastered and reissued on color vinyl and so i have those editions limited run vinyl from girder music so we have the first one and then we have the original of the second album, and we have the remaster of the second album, and then we have the original of the third album, Setting Fire to Earth. Now, this is the album I talked about in the J album um, when I mentioned Jet Circus, because the singer and the bass player from this album went on to do the Jet Circus album. Um, so this is where they changed singers, and it's a very different style, and still to this day, I think pretty much one of my wife's favorite albums of all time. She will go to this and crank it the remaster and reissued edition of that. And then they had one last album, basically. And again, they changed singers on this one. This is an original here. And then we've got the remastered of that one, which gives us the entire collection on remaster. So they did a live album a little while after that. That one has not been on vinyl, uh, but that's about it. And then uh, the there's been talk stuff online about a reunion of the original three guys, the original singer um, that I've seen floating around for a couple years. I don't know. I would love to see that, but I don't know if it's going to happen. All right. Light Force. Yeah. Pretty much a, uh, they released a, a, a self-released tape before this that was released on 10 inch that I did not pull. That was reissued on vinyl not too long ago, but this was their first and only full-length album. And then after that, uh, bass player uh, went on to form Mortification. And so this is really the uh, beginning of Mortification. Not really. I mean, he spun off. The first Mortification album was actually called Light Force, but it was such a different change in style that they changed the name to Mortification. And even the reissue of the first album is changed from light force to mortification all right and this is one that was shown not too long ago because i picked up a couple of new ones by them and that's living sacrifice so uh this was the first album by living sacrifice and at the time i got this everybody was saying they sound so much like slayer but i had not really had much of a history of listening to slayer to know that and so when i later got into listening to the slayer a little more and started Hearing some of their stuff, I thought, wow, that does sound like Living Sacrifice. So, <laughs> anyway, I was late to the game on that because I was more into that than Slayer. 
And this is the one I picked up just a couple of months ago because it was reissued on vinyl overseas. And uh, I picked up a copy around Black Friday, I believe it was on sale. And I grabbed that. And then this was the one I got uh, two of these recently that were recently reissued on vinyl by the label. And that's one of them. And then this one. I showed these probably, I don't know, about a month ago. Maybe two months ago. So, we got four of their albums. They've got quite a few more, but... All right, and this is a fun one. Lust Control. Little, tiny little dots. Signed to Jeff from Gene, the singer. It's, it's autographed by all the guys. Um, it's got a sticker in there. Lust Control was a uh, project. The guys wore ski masks, so you didn't know who they were. And it was very, uh, you know, hush-hush as to who the band was. And they were kind of punky, and the singer was kind of, you know, and whatever. The, and the lyrics were all centered around... Uh, things of the sexual sin nature of people and uh so lust control was all about you know attacking taboo topics that are not really covered and that's kind of why they probably hid themselves but um, over the years it was revealed who they were and uh yeah anyway so gene is the middle name of uh, doug van pelt from heaven's metal so he's a friend worked with him for many years at the magazine and so anyway yeah so this is they got back together they did some albums in the 80s some cassettes they were really rough and then eventually they did an album that was a little cleaner and then you know they kind of did nothing but this was like a brand new album just uh what maybe 10 years ago or so and uh yeah it's great stuff so it's the only one that has been released on vinyl to this day all right love war soak your brain i've mentioned them uh, back when i got this because this is a i don't know it's a couple years old now um, great stuff. I don't even, it's, to me, they, they have a, a lot of melodies. So there's, they're like the, a King's X type sounding band. Um, groovy, hard edged, but yet, you know, maybe a slight proggy element here or there. But anyway, I don't know how to describe it. It's really great stuff. They do have a second album that came out that uh, has not been released on vinyl that I would love to see one day. But it's actually, this album was like in the 90s and then they put an album out like, you know, 10 years ago. So it was like, 20 years later and uh but they released this one on vinyl but not the most recent all right love life goodbye lady jane um love life is a melodic anthemic uh, 80s hair type hard rock and stuff uh skid rowish maybe a little lighter than that type thing you know in that same era though and then later the guys went on, the singer at least, and, and, and the band kind of morphed into Fear Not, which we covered back in the Fs. And so it's kind of got the same feel and style. And so when Fear Not got reissued on vinyl, they released the uh, Love Life too, which those two albums to me were just two of the greatest albums back in the day. I just love Larry's voice and it's just a great stuff. All right. And then the last one we got here is Two by Love and Death. This is Brian Head Welch. Mentioned that before. After he did the Head album, which kind of went hand in hand with this book, sort of kind of, um, he, he kind of branched off into an actual band, Love and Death. And they have done, this one just got reissued, uh, 10th Anniversary Edition. I believe that's his first album. And then the most recent, Perfectly Preserved, is uh, the other one on vinyl. I don't think any of his other stuff's been on vinyl. He had an EP, but I think it was tracks from some of these songs, maybe some bonuses, but... Yeah, anyway, just the two on vinyl that I'm aware of, and that's the only two that I've got. Anyway, that's it. Fun stuff. That's the K's and the L's. We'll move into the M's where there are more bands for sure. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I will see you later. Rock on and rock hard.